Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name is Soleil and I garden in a zone 5B in mid-Michigan. We got some fun projects to do together today. First, we're gonna start out in the front sunbed and we are going to remove some daffodil foliage because it's gotten a little wild and crazy looking out there and I think it's gonna look a whole lot better when we get rid of it. In addition to that, we're gonna also deadhead some of the irises. And then we're gonna come back out here and we're going to take down the viburnum that got the viburnum beetle this year because they look awful. They have just desiccated the entire viburnum foliage. So we're gonna take those down and prepare for them for planting something else there. All right, well, let's get going. All right, well, here we are in the front sun garden and we see there are some shadows, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to see okay. What we've got going here is my shovel and uh, bin and we have lots of daffodil leaves and they are everywhere and it just really makes this look a bit wild and unruly if you ask me. So we're going to try to tame it down and we are going to get in here and cut back some of the daffodil foliage. But um, before we do that, we also need to do some deadheading because the irises have finished blooming. So in order to do that, I just follow the stem down to where the iris leaves are and I simply use my secateurs to cut it off right there. Now I'm also going to cut back the daffodils and um, what is based on research that people will tell you is that the most important thing to do with daffodil foliage is to leave it until it turns completely yellow and dies back all the way down to the ground. If you do that, it does make it very easy to remove and it also allows the plant to send all of the energy back down into the bulb to be able to get bigger and bigger blooms for next season. However, I'm going to share with you what I do and what's been successful for me in my garden and how I live with it because of the fact that I can't look at the daffodil foliage for as long as it takes for it to actually die back here in zone 5b. Um, so what I do is I go through and I actually cut them back to about two or three inches. This is after I have already given them a good three weeks of time to sit out in the sunshine and collect all of that energy and put it back into the bulb. Now, I may not get the maximum benefit from this. I may only get partial benefit, but this has been the practice that I've been doing for many years here now. And I find that it has been very successful for me. And I don't see that I have many daffodils that come back that don't bloom or that fade. Some will actually fade over time anyway, so it could be really difficult to tell unless you see a massive change in the number of blooms that you have. However, one of the other things that can happen with daffodils that can stop them from blooming is if they have been in the ground for a really long time and have formed a really large clump and they've become overcrowded. So that is often more likely to be the culprit than perhaps trimming back your bulb foliage. This is just my experience again that I'm sharing with you from what I've done in my garden and how the bulbs have come back for me each year. I wonder what kind of methods you use. There are many people out there who do things like braiding the foliage or that tie it into a ponytail or that bend it over all of those methods are also not recommended, but I find that many people do them. And so I'm wondering what your success rates are with that. And if you could share in the comments, it would be great. Also noting what zone you garden in, because I think if we can share information across this channel, that's one of the things that I really enjoy about doing this. That just gives people more options and things to consider about um, how they might deal with daffodil foliage in their garden. I've seen many comments over the years of people saying that they don't grow tulips or they don't grow daffodils because they don't like the unsightly foliage after the blooms go away. Now it is a little bit of a chore to clean them up after they're done blooming, but I will say that I believe it is 100% worth it 
for the joy that they bring me every spring. And I'll just be using all of this foliage in my compost. So my method usually as I'm going in to clean these up is to take a real big handful of them and to snip them off. At this point, I'm moving on to the alliums because I have a lot of alliums in this garden bed. We have the purple sensation and the foliage has gone uh, pretty much completely brown. That's what it's supposed to look like when you clean up your daffodils. But as you can see, uh, I did not let mine get that brown. Um, so I'm also cleaning up the allium caratavienses. And I am going to leave the foliage in place on these because one, it's beautiful. It's not very brown yet. I can see some browning on the tips, but that's about it. But also because I really, really like these bulbs and I want them to come back next year and I don't want the flowers on them to get smaller. And I don't have enough experience with them in my garden yet to know how they will behave. So we'll leave that foliage in place for as long as I can stand it. You'll see I just clip it down to the stem. Purple sensation alliums will um, seed. So if you leave them in place, they will seed around and you will get new alliums, but um, they will definitely not come up and bloom the first year. They do take some time to establish a plant. And just a little tip while I'm doing some of these things in the garden, I'm always looking for stray weeds or other items while I'm doing a chore that I might take care of while I'm in that particular garden bed. That way as I'm cleaning up and uh, I get through this garden bed, I can feel like I'm done with it for a while and can just enjoy what it looks like. Now sometimes I do miss foliage and, and what I mean by that is I might clip back all but a few and I just miss seeing some and that's okay because I usually do some garden rounds or walks in the morning and in the evening or usually at least once or twice a day and when I do that I take a look about to see if there's anything that needs doing and uh, if I see something that I left behind or didn't get while I was working on it I will just walk around with those secateurs and I will clean them up as I go. Oftentimes I'll leave little piles around the yard to come back to and pick up um, at the end of the day or the next day. If it's a really small pile, I might just leave it in the garden um, just on top of the grass and my husband will come through and he will mow and it just chops it up and turns it into compost and returns it to the soil to help feed the grass. Larger things like these daffodil foliage leaves I will definitely take to the compost bin because they're just too big to leave on the grass. So you can see we're already beginning to open up this garden bed and be able to start to see some of the plant's individual beauty again. When the daffodil foliage is in the way, it can be difficult to see what your design was supposed to look like or maybe even really enjoy the beauty of the garden. For me, it's very um, busy on the eye, so I like it a lot more once it's cleaned up. It feels much more restful and peaceful. The other thing that we're gonna do today in this garden bed, if we have time, is to pull out the dianthus that I've been telling you about, this uh, pink picotee dianthus that is at the front of the garden bed. I'm going to replace it with some of that um, solid color dianthus that I have throughout the garden bed like this right in front of me. When I first started gardening, one of the things that I liked in the beginning was variegated plants and um, blossoms that had multicolors on them. Over time, however, I found that it's much easier to design and the garden feels more cohesive and restful to me if I use solid colors. I wonder if you're drawn to things that are variegated or solid in color. Have you thought about that? 
Do you have more solid color or more variegation in your garden? Now, sometimes the leaves do get caught up in some of the foliage that um, I might have another plant in the way. So this is a mum and I'm not really worried about cutting on it because I have to kind of do the Chelsea chop on it anyway. So if I get some of those leaves and cut them back, that's okay. It'll just make the mum a little bit bushier and uh, help it stay nice and dense until it blooms in the fall. I do the Chelsea chop on quite a few of my plants and mums are one of them. I like to pinch them until about the 4th of July when it's good to stop because at that point uh, you want to make sure they set buds. See how, how much cleaner that looks? It just freshens up the space. Now some people have told me that they actually take their purple sensation uh, flower heads and they paint them like a silver or gold with some spray paint and use them for holiday decorations and I think that's pretty creative. Um, for me, I actually have saved my Allium Schubertii heads and uh, they're a little bit bigger and so I just like the ornamental um, value of them a little bit more than the purple sensation. But, uh, they definitely make a bold statement. I think if I use the Allium Purple Sensation in uh, holiday arrangements, I would need to cut the stem a little bit because boy, do they get tall. All right, got all of that. What a mess. Everything just looks dead. It's still been dry here. Um, we haven't had any rain still. Um, there is like a 50% chance of rain about a week from now, maybe. Uh, so, you know, I was doing the peony rain dance as I called it because the peonies are blooming and usually we get that huge, you know, annual storm of wind and rain that just smashes the peonies down to the ground and ruins the flowers, but not this year. They are beautiful and bright. I would love to get rain now. Now I'm just trying to find the foliage in between these crystal blue uh, salvias. I just planted these last year and they're looking pretty good. I don't know if you have ever planted oregano, but I planted some underneath this weeping cherry and boy, I don't think I'll ever get it out again. It's a pretty robust plant. It roots in and it spreads and you can pull it out, but it'll keep coming back. I have some daffodils that are in these uh, hostas and again I'm not too worried about clipping off a, a branch or two there or a leaf or two because if I do um, there's lots there. And can we just say how pretty this Veronica is again? I just love this Venice blue Veronica. I wish it flowered a little bit longer. It flowers probably for about a week and a half for me and that blue color is so beautiful. We're almost done. Doesn't this look great? Now you can really see how the flowers are beginning to separate again. And you can start to see that design of the flower bed. You can see the Dutzia. You can see those Schubertii alliums. You can see the irises again and all the different salvias. It doesn't look like a mess anymore. And man, does that feel good. I 
Uh-oh, I missed some alliums. That's all right. I'll get those later. Man, here's some more alliums that I missed. Let's get these real quick, and then we'll move on to uh, digging up the dianthus. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to, like I said, dig out these dianthus. So I have this tub that I filled with some water. It's about two inches deep. And uh, we are going to dig these out. And um, today we're not going to replace them, but we're just going to make room for the new flowers to go in. And they're the exact same type of plant. They'll be the exact same size, but I'm going to use a few less of them. And they're going to be that beautiful, almost magenta color of the other ones that I have in this garden bed. They actually call them telecoat purple. I don't really think they look purple, but, um, you know, everybody sees things differently. The dirt is extremely hard today. I mean, this soil is like cement, but with this root slayer shovel, I find I can dig things out much better. These are coming out with big clumps and clods of clay on the roots. All right, I'm gonna get these all done and then we are gonna move on to our next project, which is going to be in the backyard. We are going to finish up out there. We are going to cut down the viburnum. I don't know about you guys, but it sure does feel good to accomplish a project like this. Look at all the ones that we got dug out. I'm going to give those to probably my sister. I think she'll appreciate them. It does look a little bare without them, but that's the kind that I'm going to replace them with and it's going to look awesome when it's done. All right, we are going to start cutting back the viburnum today. So uh, if you didn't see my previous video about my viburnums by my deck, let me show you what they look like right now. So you can see they have just been gnawed away by the larvae of the viburnum beetle. And there are some small amounts of leaves left on them but i've been fighting this for several years this year i refused to get out the insecticide because i'm just tired of it i don't like using it and it's just frankly not something that i like to do in my garden because i prefer for my garden to just be naturally healthy as much as possible and there's just nothing that eats this viburnum beetle so what we are going to do now is we are just going to cut them down. This is going to be the first step in the whole process because we have to cut them down and then later we're going to have to dig out the roots. But that's not going to happen today. Today is just going to be cutting them down as far as we can. All right, let's do it.
Well guys, that's what it looks like now. It's pretty wide open. Uh, I guess it'll make it easier to get some uh, wood stain on these stairs and get them maintained a little bit more here. I'll take you up the stairs and turn around. Sorry about the mess. I was just putting some new covers on our pool floats here. They were all tore up. But uh, now you can see the view to the pool is uh, no longer covered. I actually had these shrubs here to provide some shade to us while we were sitting out here because there really is no shade since this faces south. Um, but yeah, we'll see how this goes. Well, there you have it, guys. We have removed the viburnum. We cleaned up the front sun bed. I feel like we got a ton of things accomplished today. It was a lot of work, but it definitely was worth it. And, uh, you know, keep getting those things checked off of the list. It's that time of year where everything gets busy. Well, thanks again for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time. Bye!